So hi, one of the Good Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... I'm CJ. I'm Jason. We're Drowning Pool. And we're asking some questions to say about the upcoming album, Strike a Nerve. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to the announcement so far? Oh, the response has been great, man. It's been um, it's been 100% awesome from what I've seen and heard from everybody. You know, we worked really hard on this record. Um, we recorded it a little while back and had to put it on hold like a lot of people, you know, with, with COVID and everything. But it's out now and um, we've got a couple songs we dropped off so far. And it's just been it's been awesome, man. Looking Hell forward yeah. to getting out and performing it for everybody. Oh, yeah. For sure. How long were you guys sitting on the record for? Three years. Jeez. Wow. So was this a beginning of the pandemic album or like bef- recorded before? Uh, we recorded it before, you know, we worked on it um, a couple of years before um, in, in 2019, we were ready to go. Um, and then, you know, we signed, new, you know, a new deal with, uh, with universal records and, and we had everything ready to go. We had spent a lot of time writing and recording the, the few years before leading up to it. So we've been kind of like down for almost six years just because of, you know, the way of the earth and life. So it, it's been, it's been tough, man. You just, cause you know, you have this this art, this you know this music you, that you work so hard on, and you're ready to get it out there. And just it's been it's been a waiting game forever, but the wait's over now, so it's it's good. Hell yeah, that's good. I'm glad it's finally coming out. Oh, thank you. Yeah, us too, man. <laughs> uh, so, is there any meaning behind the album title or cover art? Um, yeah, with "Strike a Nerve," I mean, you know, just like the line says, you know, you know, nowadays everybody's sensitive to just almost everything that comes out your mouth, so it's like. You know, just saying how we feel, doing what we do, and um, with you know, just being honest, and that's just definitely gonna strike a nerve with someone somewhere. <laughs> Hell yeah! Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so can you guys tell us a little bit about your writing process for this album? Yeah, how's that work, Jay? Oh, uh, it's a free for all, really. Um, <laughs> it's truly a, a band effort, which is quite refreshing. We um. When I say free for all, I mean it. Like uh, I can write music, CJ can write vocals. It's all good. We blur the lines often, and I think it yields uh, the best results possible for Drowning Pool. Mm-hmm. All right, that's interesting. Like normally, it's like each person has their you know regimented roles. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that that's cool that you guys are just kind of like whoever brings what to the table, and there's like clearly no judgment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, there's there's, there's judgment. <laughs> but, you know, that just helps the song. You know. All for the better. It's not a malicious or a mean spirited judgment, mm-hmm. but it's uh definitely accountability to bring your best material. So All right. I dig sure. it. Love it. Uh, yeah, so... it's been... okay. No, please go ahead. I was just saying just over the years, just um, you know, we did kind of start out, I guess, with the first record, just kinda, of, you know, I play guitar, you play bass, play drums, you sing. But everybody, you know, you're like like here, we've got the home studios and, and everybody in the band you know can play just about any instrument and, and write music so it is like jason's saying it's just awesome and refreshing like you know everybody brings ideas to the table and we all uh, attack them and you know someone might be more this person's idea or that person's idea but at the end of the day it's it's all four of us together um but the end result of the song and and we all you know work together on it we all want the best songs possible and, and you know if it doesn't get on the record or get done and that's all four of us are on fire about it and excited about it so you know, we love every single song on this record. All four of us put everything into it. Good. Oh, yeah. I'm very happy to hear that. So what song off this album took the longest to write? And which one is each of your own personal favorites? Longest to write? Um, I don't know, because like, you know, you have some ideas that, that you've had longer than other ideas. I guess I could say that. But um, as far as longest to write, I mean, it definitely, you know, in that last hour, the last, you know, I, I would say last year or so, before we went to recording i mean everything came together and and at that point you kind of do i would say and i wouldn't say rewrites as much as just you know edit it and try and make this part better that part better mm-hmm. um the only one i think that that was um probably the least put together maybe but it's also like one of my favorites is uh um a devil more damned you know that i we had a lot of great ideas for it um and we knew we wanted to make that a song so the fun part with that is it's not a normal structure you know it's it's definitely got its own thing going on and um it came out amazing. It came out one of the heaviest songs you've ever done. Mm-hmm. And that one was kind of, I guess, finished at the last minute, if you will. Okay. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't think it'll take long because, you know, we've all, like I said, we've all had some pretty good raw ideas coming into it. It's just a matter of, you know, perfecting them over that last year or two before we were actually recorded it. And, um, sure. you know, the final touches when you record. So it's tough to pick a favorite for me on the record because that changes on the daily. Like we've been rehearsing every day for 
the tour coming up and um you know you like them all for different reasons i mean i i literally i love every song on this record like i mean you know, i think good. we're gonna mm-hmm. play a pretty brand new song heavy set and mix it in of course with old stuff um yeah i don't know like you know hate against hates oh, i love opening with that i love you know how the record opens i love devil more than him um choke is a fun song for me it's it's kind of like if you're old school drowning pool fan at least i feel like i was coming from the mind frame of of like the center days but it's got a lot of modern you know style to it which drowning pool has um, evolved into mm-hmm. uh, what about you jay what do you think man mm. for the sake of unity i plead the fifth <laughs> come on <laughs> Come on, you don't want to stir the pot a little bit? Yeah. I mean, I, I, as with CJ, it's it's hard to pick just one of your creations and say, this is my favorite. Um, I say there's a song called Rope that I really dig. Uh, Devil More Damned, as CJ mentioned. Hate Against Hate. Uh, I think probably one of my favorites was out of this batch of songs, it didn't make the record. It's a song called uh, Freight Train that CJ and Mike wrote. And I really, really love it, but it's it's not ready yet. So at least I, I thought it was ready, but, you know, CJ can tell you more about that. That's probably one of my favorite tunes, and I was really hoping that it would it would make the record. But unfortunately, this time around, it yeah, didn't make it. Funny that you guys you have that. to it. I was playing on the guitar earlier today and I, you know, like I always like to try different tunings and stuff and, and, um, you know, we're having fun because we only have like one or two songs and drop a, like Katie can say it. So I just took this one down to, um, G sharp, just a little bit lower. And I was playing, uh, Ray train on it just to see the, like literally like an hour ago. It's funny you brought it up. Um, cause I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> I mean, the new record's coming out on the third, but we always think, and you know, we are constantly writing. So I was trying yeah, to, in, in that key, um, which would have you singing it like in C sharp ish area. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I was gonna. Wait, wait. That one out. I we're playing gonna... for the next record already. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm <laughs> off top. We're, we're supposed to be talking about the current record. I know, exactly. man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about what's coming next. You gotta hear what's coming now. It's well, been three years. <laughs> CJ, I'm curious as to why that song got axed then, because Jay said that like you could speak a little bit more on it. So I'm curious, mm-hmm. was it just like um, not heavy I enough? Think- I think uh, the thing with it is just we want to reattack some of the lyrics in it. Um, mm. Not that anything's, I guess, wrong with just trying to better. We had a lot of songs already on the plate. Um, that's one of them that was, there's several songs that were on the plate that just, you know, I guess we're not as close to finish as not musically. I, you know, I don't think we're changing anything to it. It's, it's solid. Um, as much as like, you know, Mike had, had brought a lot of lyrics to the table on that one. And um, I think he, he felt like, oh, I got to have some stronger lines. And we just didn't get to that point so it's probably one of the first ones we'll attack for the next record but but again yeah we just we've been waiting three years to get this one out <laughs> yeah fair enough we're fair not enough. gonna wait three years for the next one though see obviously we're ready to go or halfway there for the next one but oh wow. okay i got it i got it my favorite right now is mind right off the upcoming record how about that it took me a while but i got there thanks for working it out with me. hell yeah gave you plenty of time yeah man that song's heavy it's fun to play too that song's a lot of fun to play <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm watching Mike play it too back there. Last beat. Um, so how'd the track list of the album come about? Did you guys write the opener be the opener, close it be a closer, just shuffle around and see what fits? What was that process like? Um, um Yeah, I'm trying to think what the process with the I mean, we all kind of throw in a few ideas of, of, of an order. I, I know we let our, our manager in on this one and also our producer to listen to. And I think we all just kind of we all just kind of bounce it around for a day or two and um make different playlists at the house you know we want it to flow uh, i love the order of, of the of the record i'm not sure who exactly i can't pinpoint um because it's you know one of those things that we're all you know have our input on it but um mm-hmm. yeah i think it's great i mean yeah it wasn't that bad it wasn't like a you know a, a knockdown dragon fight there's been other records in the past i think where we were like you know <laughs> the order was a little bit more like a this, this, you know, maybe a disagreement, if you will, mm-hmm. um, which mm-hmm. worked itself out. But this one, with, everything's just been easier with this, I guess, because we're older and we've been together for so long. Jason's been in the band for over 10 years now, and it's our third record together with Jason. So uh, the communication's a lot better, and um, things kind of just come pl- flow a lot easier than ever before. That's really good. Oh, yeah. Very happy to hear that. Uh, so, would you guys be able to tell us where your headspace is at while you're creating this record? Um, You know, the headspace was like like five years ago 
True. you know, three to five years ago, I'm completely in different headspace now, but playing the songs now, I think I was definitely, there's some intense, heavy stuff on there. So I guess I was a little angry mm. in life. <laughs> I was going through a lot of stuff at that point. I mean, we all go through, you know, a lot of things, but um, yeah, there's some intense stuff on here. And, and uh, you know, the lyrics are true. They're, they're about, you know, situations we've been in. Some of them are, you know, family related. Some of them are just outside things, but uh, we're not the kind of band that does like, you know, not that anything wrong with that fantasy lyrics about, you know, lasers and dragons and stuff. We're just, we write you know, from real life situations. So um, we had a lot of stuff like that on this record. Everything's awesome and cool. Um, Stay and Bleed is one of my, you know, a fun one that came from the heart. You know, Jay and I had, you know, we had a long flight to Guam. It was like 24, I don't know how many hours it was. And Ooh. tired and hungry, we kind of got into it for a little bit and, you know, hugged it out later. But there was a really cool line on that. Oh, lost the phone. Um, you do you and I do me and stay the fuck away from me. <laughs> That's a good and line. I love that line, and it stuck with me. So a couple years later, right, you know, I just say, "Jay, what do you think about this line, man?" Remember that time? But uh, <laughs> I know you wrote other stuff for the song, so I'm sure the song has different meaning as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to Jason, <laughs> any any notes on the headspace, Jason? Uh, personally, I, I think it doesn't much differ from the rest of the guys. Obviously, I don't want to speak for the guys, but you know, I think it's therapy for us we Mm -hmm. go through these trials as everyone does it's a very human thing and we're lucky enough to be able to express our frustration and our anger at the world around us and and we can you know have a platform to share that and it's accepted and it's not you know overly judged but if i had to nail it down i'd say we were all pretty pissed off Mm -hmm. all really frustrated and it bled into every lyric and every note on this record. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how do you recommend your fans to listen to this album for the first time? If they do it in the car with friends, in a dark with headphones on, is it a workout album, party album? What do you personally recommend? Definitely on the workout side of things. Um, mm-hmm. I've heard that about, about the center record and um, a few other ones. But this one's, this one's slamming all the way through. Um, I would say, yeah, it's a good workout record. Play it loud sounds great the louder you crank it up the better it sounds not even kidding Absolutely. and um, there's a, also do try with the, the cans because um with this record also not that we're um you know electronic band with a lot of programming if you will or, or, or relying on that we're a four-piece rock band and, and with or without any kind of background um accentuations if you will with sounds we don't have to have that but with this record i definitely did um and we all have brought to the table a lot of little stuff in the background to accent different parts changes um was fun for me on certain lines and lyrics, like Jason mentioned this, a song called Rope. And um, when he says rope, you can hear like a kind of a sound on it. That's cool. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it says the line caught up in this machine. And when he says machine, it kind of has that, you know, computer machine sound. So little things yeah. like that. These we focused a lot on as well, just to, you know, it just, I don't know, it just makes the song sound bigger and, and just more exciting, um, you know, playing through. Again, we're not relying on it, but we definitely have a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff going on more so than ever before so and it's low in the mix so it's more of a, a headphones thing when you listen to it you just get in that metal in your face but um there's a lot going on in the background if you, if you pay attention which was fine mm-hmm. gonna have to give it another lesson with uh listen with headphones in mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah there's a lot of little things I, I was looking over the stuff the other day and i'm like i got like 10 15 tracks of just like accent stuff going on on a lot of songs wow. that's yeah. awesome you nailed it it's in the replay value Go to mm-hmm. the gym, freak out, sling some weight, and then go home and do what you do and, you know, listen again. Because he's right. Uh, at first listen, it's it's brutal and it's jarring and you're going to go on a ride. And it's a it's a unique experience either way. Then you go and you put the cans on. And as to speak more to what CJ was saying, I know he put a lot of work in with our producer to uh, add a lot of layers. So mm-hmm. if you're into that, then you're going to find it, you know. You'll you'll hear things that you missed the first time and even the second time. So, I listen to it now and I still like. Oh, I didn't catch that the first time. So, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Nice, yeah. There's a little anvil sound over here, or a little just 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 it's so many accents. It was fun to do that. Like, mm-hmm. and again, it's all like hidden, if you will, not completely hidden, but you got to listen. For sure, little gems. Yeah. That was nice. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, so this one should be super, super quick off the top of your heads. I want you guys to describe this album for new listeners in three words. No more, no less. Three words each. 
<laughs> Fucking hostile. <laughs> Fans ever song. Yeah. Jay, three words or less. Uh, three words or less. Pool no, no, no. at drowning pool best. Best drowning pool. Okay. All right. Strongest, right. strongest, strongest pool record. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, there you go. Nailed it. Hell yeah. Okay. Um, so in that same train of thought, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want listeners to have while going through the album? Um, yeah, it's an, it gets get your adrenaline going for sure. It's, it's mm-hmm. just, you know, if you're in that, if you're trying to get to work and you're running late, you got some road rage going on. This is the record for you. You know, like Jason, you go going to gym, you want to get pumped up. This is the one for you. If you're having just, you know, an intense day or, or you want to like, it's something about, you know, I don't know for me anyway, if I'm in a situation or something like, and it's just, uh, everything around me is driving me nuts. They uh, put put on heavy music, and for some reason that is, does like a calming effect. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it has the opposite effect on me too. It's like really? if I need to calm down, you throw on you throw on the heavy shit. Yeah, oh, I'm already man. like ah, oh, I need something to relate to. I feel ah, oh, like this intensity, and then and and once you get that out of your system, you you come out of it a lot better. I definitely feel that with our own record, listening back to it, you know, and playing along to it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Sure, that's so sick. Uh, so what is your favorite memory that you guys created while making this album? Um, for me, um, one of my favorite memories is definitely in the studio with Jason, you know, Jason and, uh, and again, thank you, brother. Hats off to you, man. We, we tried, you know, last minute, we already had the record down and the singing down, everything was going to go. And, you know, it's like, again, you know, trying stuff. Well, we got this down. What if we try this harmony? What if we tried this thing? And Jason was there. I mean, you know, like like a regular job, eight hours a day, ten hours a day, and they're singing, 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 and like, hey, that sounded cool. What if we try this? So you tried a lot of different things. Another another thing that that's a good memory of uh, just you know thinking back to recording process and writing. You know, we did something new with this record. We have five different tunings on it, so it was fun again working with Jason and and everybody in the band. Like, you know, let's tune the song to what works best for how Jason is expressing what he's saying on the song. So yeah. I I tend to write a lot of stuff in like drop B, drop C. Um, it's just some of my favorite stuff, but this is the first time we ever explored, um, you know, writing for the singing and, you know, some songs in E, drop D, drop C, drop B and drop A and and explore different tunings to, to see which one had the most intensity for for that song. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, those are my two favorite you know, memories, you know, <laughs> as far as like going back to the recording process. No, it's all good. Jason? Uh, I think my fondest memories of the experience were not necessarily while we were actively working on the record but the moments in between Mm -hmm. for example uh sharing a meal as we did uh every day at the restaurant next door uh going to get breakfast before each session taking a break and listen to the cover band next door practice uh i think it was and they were doing a yeah, what Toto were song to- Toto man and they had these horn section it was always really refreshing to hear them working on that so nice. it was the moments in between because it was hard hard work I think I might have blocked a lot of it <laughs> oh, wow. yeah so it was the it was the uh the down times where we could just kind of decompress and not you know be at each other's throats if you will mm-hmm. about making the record Fair enough. you know perfect where we could just exist together and share a meal and not say yeah. shit to each other. <laughs> we had a nice setup. Um, you know, we had a cool place we're staying. I were, did it in Vegas and I, we were in Vegas. I think I went out once or twice. Like we really just focused in on the, on the record and spent hours at the studio. There was a couple of times I just stayed there. We were working so much. I just stayed on the couch for a few hours, got back up and kept working. Wow. You know, it's, it's around the clock thing um, when we're in there and, and yeah, it was a cool restaurant next door. It had the cool building that we're in. So I like the vibe that we had for that I'm looking forward to hopefully working with sean again and you know we're a good uh you know six songs deep i think that are pretty solid for the next one um oh. so it's you know i think the process will be even smoother this time you know? nice for sure oh yeah uh so picture this you're on tour you're at a gas station for a rest stop what is your snack of choice snack choice mm-hmm. what's my snack of choice <laughs> what Man, have you I got? got a bunch I got, like a, I got snacks, plural choices. And I got to get some combos. I got to okay. get a Pop Tart. I got to get a banana. Um, For balance. Yeah, just to feel better about my combos and my, and my Pop Tart. Uh, I need Coke Zero. 
I need lots and lots and lots of Coke Zero. Yeah. That's yeah. That's, yeah. That's my go-to. Right. I like the Etos. I like the Cheetos. Any kind of Etos. <laughs> or Doritos. <laughs> but you just get all the Etos yeah. snacks. Uh, Fair enough. Beef jerky. The, you know, there best you protein. Mm-hmm. And then I'll get like, you know, one of those like green shakes or something that, that's, that's your liquid um, um, fruit. And then mm-hmm. I'll get like a V8. That's my liquid veggies because it's on tour. And that's that's the limitations, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's kind of to veggies in a can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on the topic of food, if the band was a dish, what dish would the band be and why? I don't know. We ate a lot of pasta when we recorded this record. So mm-hmm. eggplant parmesan. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I don't know. What would be, Jay? <laughs> If Burger we fries. were a, if we were a dish, we would be, we would be loaded nachos. Ooh, loaded nachos, a little bit of everything up mm-hmm. in there. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. spicy jalapenos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Be. Okay, loaded nachos. Perfect. Tex Mex, yeah. loaded nachos. All right. Next, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so for the last couple of questions, we're going to shift completely away from music and go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with drink? Oh, I thought you meant death row like the record. Uh, no, no, unfortunately yeah, not. Right. <laughs> but you said that music. Yeah. All right. What was? Oh, sorry. What was the last meal? Yeah. With a drink. And a drink. And a drink. Oh wow, man. I guess, you know, lately I've been getting it's just not a whole lot of it because I'm not drinking so, as much. They used to, but um, I'll probably do you know the steak and potatoes and some fine wine. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. I yeah. couldn't answer that question. I couldn't answer that question. It's just what a, what, a, what a dark question that is. It is <laughs> just. I mean, really, if you want to phrase it to, to be a little bit brighter, it's just. What is your favorite, favorite meal? Yeah. What's your favorite drink? <laughs> like, that's really what yeah. we're doing here. Exactly, yeah. All oh, right on, right on. Um, I went to that pretty fast. Like, I'm ready to go. Oh, yeah, well, we're going to get out of here, checking out. All right. Set. Let's get mm-hmm. some wine. Let's go. Prime me up. <laughs> I guess I'm being, I'm being too literal, I guess. Uh, I think I'm a pizza guy. Hmm. Pizza and I'm a simple man. Pizza and soda. That's... Fair enough. Yeah, I'm cozier. almost ashamed. I'm almost ashamed, but I'm no. You shouldn't be. Pizza is delicious. What uh, what toppings do you have on that pizza? I'm a meat lover's guy. Give me okay. all the meat. All right. You know that, that crazy, sinful, stuffed crust jam they got? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't get to eat it often, but, you know, like on special occasions. And like, like your like last meal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Thanks for helping me get there. Yeah, I guess I know now. Should I exactly. ever find myself? You're prepped. <laughs> You're good. Condemned. Condemned man. Uh, yeah. so, if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? Oh, wow. Just one for a week? Mm-hmm. For a week. Oh, man. I'd live in the wizarding world, of course. Oh, all right. Well, how's you? I'm a uh, Gryffindor. That's fair. Oh, wow. Look at that. Mm. Man, I don't know. <laughs> For me, <laughs> Avatar looks pretty cool. Oh, Last Airbender or Pandora? <laughs> Pandora, I guess. Pandora. Okay. All right. All right. That's good. That's good. Uh, so I have now of asking the last question, and every single person that we've spoken to have said that it is the most important question. What's your favorite color? Oh, uh, that's easy. I like green, but I also like I'm a fan of aliens and stuff, even though they're probably gray. I like the green ones. I like to imagine my alien has a green one, even though he's probably gray. I do too. That's fair. Yeah. I, I don't think I have a favorite color. Huh? I don't, I don't think I have a favorite color. <gasps> Whatever this color like, is. It's a gray screen. Sorry, Jay. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> I like dark colors. Okay. My favorite, my, my colors that I, you know, gravitate to are probably dark. <laughs> With the exception of pink. Okay. Fair enough. That's good. All right. Good. I like black and gold where I think Jay likes, like, I don't know, blue and, like, gray. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. It's a nice contrast. Uh, it really is. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you guys would like to plug? I uh, like to plug, yeah, man. I'm coming tour. You know, we haven't been out in a while and we've revamped the set list and we're definitely going to play all your favorite songs and 
you know, we're going to have a handful of new songs and they're jamming. I know you don't, might not know them yet, but you know, we're not going to play a lot. It's not going to get you going. So, uh, yeah, be looking for that. We start on the 26th in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, uh, September 26th, and we go through October and, and take a little break and then the rest of November and December. And so, yeah, come see us. Come hang out with us, man. I haven't seen everybody in a long time. Come see our show. We're bringing everything out on stage, all the all the lights, and bells and whistles, and, um, you know, we're ready to rock out with you. Hell yeah. Perfect. It's going to be sick. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for now. This guy's been Drowning Pool, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.